Hallo, willkommen zurück. Ich schätze dich und hoffe. I don't know if you could understand that or not, but welcome back to another video. I appreciate you and 15 German brands you pronounce wrong. So before we get into each one, I'll give my perception or idea as to which one or how it's going to be mispronounced, what area of the world might mispronounce it, and whether or not I think it's mispronounced, or I, you know, I, I also understand how the majority of Canadians that I know would probably pronounce it, and so, Audi, first one, there's going to be a lot of Canadians who are going to call it an Audi, I'm guessing it's probably Audi, right, it's probably Audi, Audi, an Audi, as opposed to Audi. So that's the first one. I'm going to say, it, I, I think it's Audi, but maybe it's Audi. I doubt it's Audi, but that's how a lot of Canadians say it. First one is Audi. Most Americans that I know pronounce it like I just said it, Audi. Audi. In German, we say Audi. 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 And there's actually a funny story as to one. where this name came from. In 1904, a guy called August Horch founded a car company called A. Horch und Company Motorenwarenwerke Zwickau. But a few years later, he left the company. And oh, big shout out to the guy who commented on one of my uh, videos. We were talking about language and I was trying to pronounce things and I was doing horribly. And they used a really, really great analogy for German that the words can be like Lego. Lego blocks and you can like add additional blocks onto any word to create like, I mean, you wouldn't create like too long of words, but yeah, the Lego block analogy. And founded a new one, but he wasn't allowed to call it Horch again. And since that's not only his last name, but also means listen in the imperative form, he ended up translating it into Latin and that's Audi. So Audi means Listen, thirsty. the company is located in Ingolstadt baby. in Bavaria. Ingolstadt. Then, of course, one of the most famous car brands in the world is... Okay, this one, I want to say the mispronunciation that people are doing is calling it a Porsche. And I believe... I believe... That is Porsche. 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 It should be Porsche, not Porsche. Is this one. It's located in Stuttgart, Germany. My I've guess. heard Americans pronounce it Porsche or Porsche. In German, Porsche. we say Porsche. So there's oh, like this Porsche. short A sound in the end. Okay. Porsche. It was founded Porsche. by Ferdinand Porsche in 1931 as a company for vehicle development work and consulting. And one of the first assignments that the company had was from the Nazi government at the time to design a car for the general public, which was what later would become Volkswagen. And so they designed the Volkswagen Beetle, the VW Käfer. That's interesting. You know, I feel like an idiot. But if somebody just said Porsche to me and I was looking at a Porsche, I would probably think it's an Italian vehicle, which I'm, I'm very, very, that's, you know, it's, that's stupid. But you look at the logo, it looks kind of like more has a German styling to it, if you ask me. And the name itself, Porsche, Porsche, it's not even Italian at all. You know, Lamborghini, Lamborghini, Dominic de Coco. Antonio Magaliti. Um, uh, those are Italian, not German. Uh. This one sounded super funny to me when I first heard how people pronounce Hans. it in English. Hans. I actually used to drive one back in Germany. Um, so yeah. most Americans... Okay, I'm interested to see because I just say Mercedes Benz. Benz is a very like Canadian and American way of pronouncing it. So I'm interested to see how we all pr might probably mispronounce it. Mercedes, 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 like, yeah. I would just say a Mercedes Benz, so. Let's call this Mercedes. In German, we pronounce it Mercedes. So Mercedes versus 
Mercedes. 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 So it's really Mercedes pretty different. Benz. And the full name, of course, is Mercedes Benz. I've also heard that in England, people also refer to Mercedes as Merck. Um, a German will Mercedes. not know what That's you're talking about if you say that, just no. for your information. Originally, it was just the company Daimler Motorengesellschaft, founded in 1890. The name Mercedes was added Mercedes. later, inspired by a Daimler car dealer called Emil Jelinek, who was also driving car races under the alias Monsieur Mercedes, which was based on his daughter's first name, Mercedes Jelinek. The name was later also used for one of the car models in the year 1900, and then eventually became the name of the brand itself. This one simply has... All right, number three. What do we got? BMW. How do, you, how do you mispronounce BMW? It's just three letters. I know it probably stands for something. It has well. three letters, but... We also affectionately call them Beamer. A Beamer. Oh, what are you driving, man? Uh, just, he's got a Beamer, doesn't he? Yeah. A, a BMW? Yeah, he's got a Beamer. Of course, they're pronounced differently in English and in German. In English, people say BMW. In German, we say BMW because W is pronounced W in German. And it stands for Bayerische Motorenwerke, which means Bavarian Engine Works. And of course, BMW is located in my hometown, Munich, which is the capital of Bavaria. The company was founded in 1916 and originally mainly produced aircraft engines. It's said that the logo represents a plane propeller and it also has the colors of Bavaria, blue and white, to show the company's origin. Then after World War I, they survived like by producing color. motorcycle yeah. engines, farm equipment, household items and railway brakes, and built their first motorcycle in 1923, and then became a car manufacturer a few years later. They then went back to concentrating on aircraft engines again during World War II, using forced labor from prisoners in concentration camps, and didn't get back into car manufacturing until until 1952. Overall, all of these German car brands that I just mentioned are more or less considered luxury brands in the US. I mean, Porsche, of course, is considered a luxury brand in Germany. As so, so far, I was right for the Audi one because it's pronounced Audi, and I was sure it was pronounced Audi, not Audi. Porsche, the Porsche, I was sort of right. I was still mispronouncing it. The Mercedes Benz, I didn't really know how Germans pronounced it and BMW was also this is all very very interesting as well but Audi Mercedes and oh, BMW sorry. are pretty much just regular car brands to us obviously they do have expensive luxury cars as well oh, but the regular oh, models sorry. are driven by people from oh, all sorry. social classes oh, in Germany oh, sorry. I don't know how I uh, see how Germans pronounce it here in Canada most people are probably going to pronounce it Volkswagen like Volkswagen, not Volkswagen. Volkswagen. English speakers call this Volkswagen, while in Germany we usually just call it VW, VW, VW. But even oh, if we yeah, did VW. go by the full name, it would be pronounced Volkswagen and not Volkswagen. So just imagine Volks that it was spelled Wagen. with an F and V Volks instead. Volks Volks Wagen. Oh, this literally wagon. means people's car or car of the people and it was founded during the Third Reich in the late 1930s right. because Hitler wanted to have a car that was affordable for middle-class Germans and that met the needs of an average family so this was his attempt to make cars something that wasn't only available to upper-class people but to the general public and the company is based in Wolfsburg. Wolfs now let's move on to something other than cars. So this is one of the brands where when I heard Americans say this for the first time, I did. Americans and Canadians probably can pronounce this like Adidas. Adidas. I didn't understand at all what they were referring to because they usually pronounce it Adidas. And in Germany, we say Adidas. 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 Huh. Okay. Adidas. Super different. Adidas. It's the second largest sportswear manufacturer in the world after Nike. And I don't think that a lot of people... And mind you, an absolutely iconic logo. Talk about branding. Nike and Adidas. Talk about branding, man. That thing is seared into the minds of the Zeitgeist. German word. 
will know that this is a German company. It also has an interesting backstory. It was founded by Adolf Dassler, whose nickname was Adi. So the brand name is based on his first and last name. Adi Das. He founded the company at his mother's house after he returned from World War I and he actually played a big role in developing spiked running shoes. In 1924, his brother Rudolf joined the company and they founded the Dasla Brothers Shoe Factory, but they later got into a fight, split up and his brother actually founded his own company called Puma, which became the biggest ah. rival of Adidas. So both Adidas and Puma are German brands. Another shoe manufacturer that many Germans would probably Birkenstock. Hey man, I just got a brand new pair of Birkenstocks, baby. Oh, they're comfortable, all right. They're beautiful. I love them. Oh yeah, you can just slip them right on. They're so convenient, you know. You don't gotta reach down and tie tie no shoelaces. You just put them on. And... Yeah, Birkenstock. Yeah, we. I don't know why I keep doing this Southern American accent. Uh, yeah, Canadians, Americans probably pronounce this just like it looks. Birkenstock. Birkenstocks. We consider very, very German. Like if you talk about something typically German, Birkenstock is definitely going to be mentioned. But of course, this brand is known all over the world nowadays, and it's natural that people pronounce it with their native accent. So English speakers usually say Birkenstock. In German, we say Birkenstock. Birkenstock, Birkenstock, which literally translates to birch stick. The roots of the company go all the way back to the 18th century, by the way. Ah, okay. From That's shoes right. to alcohol, this is pretty- Jägermeister. Jäger. Hey man, do you want to do some shots of Jäger later? That would be wicked, dude. Pronounced Jägermeister in German, Jägermeister. English speakers usually say Jägermeister, which Jäger. is pretty much the same, just with a pretty thick accent. And people also often use the abbreviation Jäger, like, can I have a shot of Jäger, please? It literally means hunt master. Jäger is the hunter and Meister is master. And it's a German herbal liquor. Herbal liquor. This is a German grocery store. Aldi. You can also find them. I'm not familiar with Aldi. I would pronounce that Aldi. Aldi. In other European countries, and they even have some stores in the US, I usually get the majority of my groceries at Aldi here in the US. Aldi. In Germany, we call stores like Aldi or Lidl discounters because they sell groceries for very low prices. In English, people usually pronounce this Aldi. I think I've also heard Aldi before, but I think most people say Aldi. Or they also sometimes add an S that isn't there in the end and say Aldi's. In Germany, we just say Aldi. It has its origins in 1945. When we need some discount grocery shops. I, I got some bread earlier. I got some bread. Seven, seven dollars Canadian. I mean, it's it's good bread, but is that expensive? That's probably not even expensive. But seven dollars is probably, probably not that bad. When the two brothers Theo and Karl Albrecht took over their mother's corner store and came up with the concept of having a small selection while having low prices. The name Aldi comes from Albrecht Discount, so Albrecht, which is their last name, Discount. In Germany, we have Aldi Süd and okay. Aldi Nord, Aldi South and Aldi North. Again, this is because of two brothers splitting up into two different businesses. In the US, the store is simply called Aldi and it actually belongs to Aldi South, while the store Trader Joe's belongs to Aldi North. Somebody mentioned that in one of my prior videos that Trader Joe's was German owned, or at least of German origin. Is it still German owned? I mean, it, they operate in the United States, but I don't know. Yeah, I used to go to Trader Joe's all the time because it's just uh, just south of the border from where I live. And yeah, we I kind of don't live in the same area anymore, so we don't go as often, but... Now let's move on to cosmetics. Nivea is a German brand Nivea. from Hamburg that's mainly known for its face Canadian lotion in the little blue Nivea. container. But of course, Definitely. they offer a large variety of products nowadays. Again, I find the English pronunciation pretty funny here. English native speakers usually say Nivea. Nivea. In German, we say Nivea. Nivea. So the emphasis is on the E. Nivea. Nivea. This is a German hair cosmetics brand that you can... 
I'm not familiar with this brand, but I would pronounce it if like I was looking at the store in a Canadian mall, I would say Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf. Find all over the world pretty much. In German, we pronounce it Schwarzkopf, which yeah. literally means black head. Schwarzkopf. English native speakers usually pronounce it Schwarzkopf or Schwarzkopf or something along those lines. Yeah, you got me. Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany. Deutsche Bank also literally means German bank. Of course, you can find Deutsche Bank not only in Germany, but in other countries as well. A good friend of mine here in Cincinnati actually just did an internship with them in their New York City location. And she's also going to start a full-time job with them soon. And Americans usually pronounce it Deutsche Bank or something along those lines. And my friend always uses the abbreviation Deutsch when she refers to it. Um, so like she said, I got a job offer from Deutsch which is just really funny to me because that literally just means German. <laughs> this is a German menu. Speaking of Cincinnati, Ohio, anybody Eminem fan? There's one song Eminem did on a recent album called uh, These Kind of Nights. And it has a song that goes, it makes a pun, a dad pun about Ohio. It goes, Holy Toledo, it's Miss Ohio. That's the best ass I've seen in a while. This chick is catty, and she's from Cleveland. Oh. Well, but she's a bango. She's a bango, but she's from Cleveland. This chick is catty. Is that a miniskirt? If it's a maxi, that's the shortest thing since a... That's the shortest thing for a dress. Cincinnati. That was terrible of high-end domestic appliances and it's not exactly pronounced wrong in English but English native speakers usually say something like Mila, Mila um, so it usually sounds more like an A in the end whereas in German we say Miele Miele. So the last letter is just a little bit different. And Miele really does stand for quality. If you invest in a Miele dishwasher or washing machine you just know that it's going to be a good product and it's going to last. This is something that everyone knows and loves, hopefully. Maybe not everyone knew that Haribo is actually German. We pronounce it Haribo. Haribo. To be honest, I don't know if we get this in Canada because I'm not familiar with Haribo. And again, the name originates in the name of the founder of the company, which was Hans Riegel, and he was from the city of Bonn in Germany. Bonn? So Hans Riegel from Bonn, and he always took the first two letters, put them together, and it became Haribo. Hans Riegel Bonn. Haribo. And last but not least, let's talk about a... Yeah, so this airline company... Canadians are probably going to pronounce it Lufthansa. Lufthansa. Company that is not doing super well during these times, but it's one of the largest companies in Germany and second largest airline in Europe. And maybe you've flown with them before. In English, people usually say Lufthansa, but in German, we say Lufthansa. So the emphasis on the first syllable, Lufthansa yeah, versus Lufthansa. And that was the last brand name on my list. So now, of course, I want to know from you guys which of these brand names you've always mispronounced and maybe which ones you didn't even realize were German brands. And also let me know in the comments. So most of them I was, I guess you could say, mispronouncing. Let's just run through them one more time to see how... I'm just going to look at the word and pronounce it like I usually pronounce it. Audi. Porsche. So yeah, Audi. Audi, Porsche. See, uh, that's where I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm saying Porsche. At least I'm not saying Porsche, which is what a lot of people say in Mercedes Benz, BMW, Volkswagen, Adidas, Birkenstock, Jägermeister, Aldi. I don't know that company. Nivea, Schwarzkopf, Deutsche Bank, Miel. Haribo Lufthansa. All right. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny. I love language. All right. See you soon. Um, 
Any hockey fans out there, it's the last game of the season for the Vancouver Canucks. And playoffs, baby! Oh! Playoffs start probably on Sunday or Monday. I'm pumped. Let's go! All right. Tschüss. Bye.